Okay class, today we're going to connect the idea that a triangle fits inside of a circle, and we're going to connect the idea that trigonometry isn't just for triangles, it also is used in circles. So we're going to start with this drawing right here. We have this nice circle that's drawn with a radius indicated as R. And we're also given this Greek uh, term here named, called theta. Theta represents an angle of rotation when you're going around a circle. Uh, what we're going to focus on is how to represent these coordinates, x and y, as they refer to the x-axis and the y-axis, as the position around your circle, uh, given a given angle here. So what I first want to indicate is that every time we measure theta around this circle, we're going to begin by thinking of it as a counterclockwise angle. So this theta is going from a starting position here. We're starting off at a maximum x value and no y value. So if I were to record a coordinate for this, it would have an x value equal to the radius and a height of zero. Okay? Um, so we're going to start at that position and go counterclockwise a measurement of theta, either in degrees or in radians. So what I want to then consider is how does this theta and this radius turn into the position for x and y? Well, let's do two things. Let's go ahead and add a component. Now, a component, uh, in this case, is vector component. Uh, we're talking about horizontal and vertical. Or in terms of the coordinate, the horizontal piece is on the x-axis, and the vertical piece is on the y-axis. So I'm going to draw in this vertical component, the y value, and then the x value is along the x-axis. I'll try to highlight that beneath the axis here. This forms a triangle. And I know this is a right triangle because I chose to draw in the vertical piece and the horizontal piece. So they are perfectly perpendicular. They mean at 90 degree angles. Which means that right triangle trigonometry has to apply to this triangle as well. So if this is my angle, the x value, the horizontal piece, that is the adjacent side to a right triangle. And the y value, the vertical piece, would be the opposite side of a right triangle. And so we can begin to write out the trig ratios by saying that the cosine of your angle theta would be equal to the adjacent side, which I'm going to deal with as x, because it would be the x component of that coordinate. We're going x horizontally, y vertically. So the cosine of theta would be the adjacent side, x, over its hypotenuse, which is the radius of your circle, r. I'm going to rewrite this one more way. I'm going to solve for x. In doing so, I would multiply r on both sides of the expression to get r times the cosine of theta is equivalent to x. Therefore, your x component is your radius times the cosine of theta. Let's write the uh, y component as well, the vertical component. Uh, but that one would be the opposite side to theta, so we're going to use the sine function. Sine of theta will equal the y value, the vertical piece, over the radius, its hypotenuse. Solving this one also for y will yield radius times the sine of theta equals y. I'm going to write that as a coordinate pair. x is now radius cosine theta, y is now radius times sine of theta. This can be written as r cosine theta, r sine theta. Now the good news is that this right triangle, everything in here appears to be a right triangle uh, for any values between 0 and 90. The even better news is that this still works even for a theta that goes beyond 90. So you consider a theta that goes out to here, or now beyond 90, a triangle can still be formed, and this would be the reference angle for the triangle, and we could still find an x value and a y value with that as a reference angle. But even better is I don't have to change my angle. I can actually put whatever that might be, 90 plus the, or 180 minus this, this value here, or 90 plus an additional value, that still fits inside the cosine and the sine. Now, just like that, the quadrants in a coordinate grid, uh, in this quadrant, x is positive, y is positive. That means that for values of theta between 0 and 90, cosine is going to be positive and sine is positive. In the second quadrant, where your values for theta go between 90 and 180 degrees, you're now dealing with a negative cosine and a positive sine because the x values here are negative and the y values here are positive. As we go down into the third quadrant, x values are still negative, and now our y values are also negative. x and y are negative, therefore cosine and sine are both negative in this quadrant. 
And in the last quadrant, <clears throat> we have positive x's and we have negative y's, which make this quadrant positive cosines and negative sines from 270 degrees back to 360 degrees. So it's a pretty neat concept that we can take a triangle and turn it into uh, the trigonometric functions cosine and sine.